Thank you very much. Good to be here. <clears throat> so the subject today is fish out of the water. <clears throat> well, I've been out of the water every single day. Just, uh, <laughs> being born and raised in Africa, the motherland, being black, get an accent, bold, <laughs> a Muslim, married to a Jew, <laughs> what else? <laughs> I got it all. <laughs> yeah, so anyway, um, I was born and raised in a little uh, village in eastern Sudan. And speaking of Sudan, you Nebraskan people really need to understand that Sudan is like ex Soviet. Seven countries in one country, they can't get along. It's not north and south, it's not Muslim and Christian, period. So um, now Sudan is split into two countries, South. We still have problems there because Southern Sudan need to split into three countries. Northern Sudan need to split into five countries. So we still have problems, you know. The genocide in Darfur is in Northern. But anyway, I'm from Eastern Sudan and we are a minority being bombarded by the government and I have to flee the country. I'm a child of war, live in refugee camp. Anyway, fled, and uh, I was lucky enough to go to um, um, Egypt, crossing the desert, and from Egypt I went to Japan. Voila! <laughs> An African guy in Japan, so of course I was the biggest dude there. <laughs> I was, yeah, always a stick out. So anyway, looking for a job, I don't speak the language, and I even didn't speak English that time. So the only job is construction. But construction sucks, even though I'm a big guy and everything, because their tools are so small. <laughs> See what I mean? So that really sucks, really. Um, yeah, my shoes, no, half of my toes are out, and that's really bad. So anyway, um, lucky enough to spend two years going to construction, going to school, learning. I learned Japanese. I started to speak Japanese better than even my own language. So at one time I was on the train and I saw a black guy. It's like, oh, hi. <laughs> <laughs> I was a Rasta hair and he was a Rasta hair. So he thought I'm Jamaican and I thought he's African. <laughs> he started talking to me with that weird English and I'm like, okay, switch to Japanese. Mm -hmm. So me and him, the brother, were talking Japanese and all the Japanese people were like, <laughs> apocalyptic. <laughs> So anyway, but he's like, what do you do? I said, construction. He's like, no, 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 no. The brother is going to hook you up. How? Oh. He's like, well, Jamaican are lazy. And I said, I know that. <laughs> he's like, well, I have a job as a nightclub bouncer. I said, what's that? He said, you sit in your ass and do nothing. <laughs> and I said, huh? He said, you get paid $45 an hour. <laughs> oh, and plus free food and drink. Really? <laughs> well, I can see heaven from my windows, like Sarah Palin said, you see Russia. I see heaven. <laughs> so I have a bouncer, yeah, life is good, man. You just sit out. I like you, you come in. I don't like you, you don't come in. Yeah, God of the club. <laughs> so I, anyway, I spent 10 years there, and then I came to the US. So I came to the U.S. Um, so and um, I started working for LPS. I was a community liaison, great job. And then you and Ella offered me a community liaison job. I got that job. I like it. And boom, September 11th happened. I was like, my God, I left them back in Africa, those terrorists, and now they are following us here. <laughs> if I'm really true American, I'm going to fight. I might not come back, but you know what? Like the Japanese did, you know, some of them, they didn't come back, but I'm going to join the fight. So I went to the recruitment office and I said, uh, I want to join. The guy, he said, you're too old. Yeah. Oh, okay. Thank you. But I still can't fight, we're African. <laughs> Left. I'm not giving up. A year later, I went to the recruitment station and I said, uh, I want to join. Now, 
six months later, I went and uh, I was talking, and then there was an E7, which is uh, Sergeant First Class back in the office. He said, what is your accent from? I said, from Africa. He's like, I guess they don't speak Arabic there, right? And I was like, they speak all kind of that. What language do you want? He's like, if you speak Arabic, we'll enlist you. I said, you're damn right, I speak Arabic. <laughs> I speak nine languages. Whoa, really? I said, yeah. He's like, how old are you? And I said, oh, yeah. I, I'm strong enough, you know. <laughs> He's like, uh, how old? I said, uh, I'll be 40 soon. He's like, then you are 39. And I said, yes. When are you going to be 40? And he said, it's two weeks. He's like, we need to write. Sign you up right now. <laughs> Sign me up. I went to my uh, ex-wife and I said, hey, I'm enlisted. And she's like, you're full of shit. <laughs> and I said, here's my ID. <laughs> so I went to, uh, so anyway, they ship us to boot camp. I went and I just saw the drill sergeant, I didn't realize actually the drill sergeant are so narcissistic and they talk and oh. <laughs> so anyway, the, the guy, uh, he said, get all your dumb things from the bus and line up. I lined up, we lined up and it was 3 a.m. and I was tired and then I walked one step towards the door and he's like, came to my face, he was short this thing, and he's like, with the hat and everything and I was tired and he was like, did I tell you to move? And I said, no, you didn't. But obviously, you're moving, going towards it. How did you know? Are you God? And he's like, really? And yeah. <laughs> anyway. So anyway, I just let it go. Then one time, within boot camp, you know, I chew tobacco and then tobacco, then so I have to leave tobacco. But there are some other guys who cannot live boot camp, survive boot camp without tobacco. So what they did, they stole the drill sergeant tobacco camp. <laughs> and he came. He came and he's like, who the f took my camp? <laughs> you know, and he was lecturing us and he's like, I've been in the military scene, Jesus was a private. <laughs> and I said, oh please. Who the f said that? Is that you, John Wayne? <laughs> and I said, I said it. And he's like, I said, the word Jesus was offensive. I love Jesus. He's like, I said, you're a fucking Muslim. And I said, yes, we are in America. We have freedom of choice. I love Jesus. <laughs> 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 How do you love him? Tell me, grandfather, because I'm old. Mm -hmm. I said, well, he's my distant cousin. How <laughs> 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 well, the fuck that happened? <laughs> and I said, he got a Negro hair. <laughs> he's from Africa, distant cousin, so. <laughs> Listen, private grandfather, what the fuck is your name? Do you know something called in America duct tape? And I said, yes, real sorry, I know duct tape and Windex. <laughs> he said, actually, the word Windex is the only smarter word came out of your fucking mouth. Now, duct tape, keep it, nothing. Do you understand? You're so annoying. Anyway, so, shut up. Graduated from boot camp. That great sergeant, by the way, he's one of my favorite people. I love him. We're still connected, but anyway. <laughs> graduated from boot camp. They ship us to the processing when we're going to Iraq. So, and then uh, my name is kind of too dangerous to really go to Iraq is my name, Maha Jewish, you know, I'll get killed. Then the military intelligence said, oh, wait a minute, we're going to change the name. Choose. They gave me a name, Sanchez. <laughs> <laughs> there is no f***ing black Sanchez in the world. <laughs> no. Look at, and, no, I'm black as hell, African, look at my nose. No, no Sanchez. Lincoln. 
<laughs> President, I like Lincoln. Good, I'm from Lincoln. So they give me the word Lincoln. <laughs> At Lincoln, I went to the bank and I forgot I have a uniform with the word Lincoln. Oh. My desert uniform was ready to ship in two weeks. So I went to withdraw and then they called the police and all of that. They arrested us. <laughs> that we actually faking and oh my god, that, that was a big fish out of the water. <laughs> so anyway, but I did go to Iraq and uh, we fought a good fight. Uh, we've been blown up many times and injury all over, but I'm still standing. I'm still talking. Um, it was a um, great experience. Uh, I did two tours, thank God coming here uh, one piece. But uh, one thing I wanna tell you about, which I haven't talked before, talked about it before, is my experience going to the medical exam, processing the military. <laughs> yep, he knows. When you are 39, you come, they have to check your prostate. I didn't know what's the <laughs> so the guy I was naked there, he is like, okay, grabbing my balls. And he's like, cough. And I said, I can't. Either one, or the, that, or I can't. I'm grabbing, and then you tell me to cough, I can't. <laughs> You're joking me there. <laughs> and, and I said, well, he said, well, um, do you have any problem with your ball? And I said, no, my dad got 16 children, so genetically, I'm good. <laughs> it's organic, there is no reptile or anything. So. <laughs> then the guy, he said, okay, we're going to test. And I said, here you go. He said, no, bend. I bend. And he said, grab your cheeks. And I bend this. <laughs> He was doing freaking, I, I hear like a, kind of like a liquid. And then he stick whatever his finger. And I, and I was like, oh! What is my memorandum right? I didn't see it coming. It been all my exit for 39 years. How? Please, do you have a chaplain? <laughs> Minister here to kind of, you know, console me. <laughs> Just took it. And, and he's the guy who's still talking. How is it to grow up in Africa? Shut up! <laughs> oh, talking, no! <laughs> so, but anyway, that was a big fish out of the water. <laughs> um, thank you very much. <laughs>